All right, so we're getting more professional by the day. Um, I have changed my camera setup so that it is now uh, right over top of my workspace. I know a little screen right there I can look at to see what I'm doing. And I've ordered new audio equipment. Pretty cool. I've got a microphone coming and I've got an audio interface, so we're good, doing good. Anyway, I told you guys I would go over a prism. Um, so, here. Here's the prism. This is a Prism 5 AC Gen 2. Um, I have already had it apart once just so that I can see how to take it apart. And of course, uh, look up the parts that are inside of it so I don't look like a bloody moron when I go to explain things to you. So um, I guess the first thing I need to do is I need to get a little jar to put my parts in. Which I usually have plenty of those around. And there's one right here. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so first things first. To take apart these guys is just like a rocket. Now, by the way, ignore my cat. She is still in heat. You take these guys off first. There we go. And you've got your little gold washers that squish down some of these little white washers right here, which you can see. Um, those little guys there, of course, seal the moisture. Uh, or keep the moisture out, you know what I mean? I need some tweezers. Where be my tweezers? Oh, here they are. Those are the ones I'm looking for. The really sharp ones that stab you in the fingers every time you go to use them. Okay, so let's see here. Mm, there we go, there's one. You don't want to wreck those, by the way. If you do, you're going to have to go to Profasco and get some new ones. Or whatever. Wherever you go to get your washers. Okay, here we go. We got those guys off. Uh, next thing you're going to want to do... Pop that guy. And you need to take the screws out. There we go. So princess, an elf, and a demon walk into a bar. That is the beginning line for probably one of the best TV shows I am watching right now. Alright, so we'll put this aside. Magic hands, I guess. Okay, let's flip her over. Don't worry, it's just a really good rubber gasket on here. I'm going to get my uh, pokey tool. There we go. And we'll give her a little bit of a... There we go. Pop. Okay. Now, as you guys already know, this is made out of uh, cast aluminium. Uh, good stuff. So, I always like to make sure that these gaskets sit absolutely beautifully before I... Uh... There we go. So, yep. Yeah. Aluminium. Nice silicone seal around the LED light pipes. I'm gonna put this over here now. Yeah, put it over here. Here, here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Pretend I'm taking out that screw and that screw, and then we are in. I really need to work on my light. That's gonna be that's another project. I just I literally threw this light together tonight to try to uh, try to uh, have a decent light for my bench. Uh, I have actually ordered a better light for my bench, a proper light pack, but whatever, here we go. So, I'm going to pop this guy open. Look, more aluminum. And by the way, there is a thermal pad, a little thermal coupling pad there. Uh, it's just a little jelly kind of heat sinky thingy that, uh, you know, sticks to the CPU in this case and uh, cools things off. So anyway, let's get on with things. This is what you wanted to see, right? Okay. You look professional here, right? I'm going to try to look professional. Okay. <clears throat> so first things first, because I want to keep this video short, because everybody said keep it short because people have attention to fans. Um, I'm going to answer the first question that everybody has. Yes, this Ethernet port is exactly the same Ethernet port that they use for every other radio like this. So the 
uh, Loco M2, the Nanostation M2, any of the Nanostations will be using the exact same Ethernet port, okay? Um, so if you do like I do, when one of them gets blown up in a storm, uh, or just burns out over bad age or whatever, you know, you can actually just throw them in a bucket and save them because it only takes two seconds to whip out your heat gun and remove these guys and put a brand new one on, okay? So there, that's the ethernet port explained for you. I am planning to do a video shortly of uh, swapping ports on these guys with scavenged ones. Um, so let's get into the details here. <clears throat> First of all, we have got a, let's see here, this is a QCA9557, I believe it is a Qualcomm chip. Let me just look that up quickly. Yeah, it's a Qualcomm Atheros. Okay, <clears throat> so this one, I'll bring this up nice and close so you guys can actually see the chip on there. You can see all the chips, rather than use the zoom feature on the camera. Okay, so this chip right here, this is the heart and soul, the brain, whatever. And this is your hard drive right here, per se. Uh, as you can see, you can actually stick another one on there. Um, so this guy here is a Scorpion. This is the project name for this chip. It's a MIPS 74KC, 720 megahertz. Uh, let's see here, ABGN, 2x2 MIMO. Let's see here. Uh, the original release date was 2013, November 18th. Let's see here. It's got Norn and Flash, 2x PCI Express, 2x USB 2.0. DDR1 or 2 uh, by 32. Let's see here. Ah, you put 18 devices off one of these bad boys. So yeah, that's basically the processor right there. That is the heart and soul of this bad boy. Now, <clears throat> all right, so this right here, this is an Atheros as well. This is your GPS module. I believe that the chip here is an Atheros. Let me see if I can pull it up again. It's an AR1511. So that is the AR1511 chip right there for this bad boy. So this is your GPS right here. Now I'm, go I'm going over the uh, the guts here. I'm going over the most important parts, by the way, because uh, I could go through every little component, but what the hell's the point? You guys just want to know how this thing works. Okay, now, <clears throat> see, this guy has its own little internal radio. There's, uh, this is your transceiver chip, by the way, the ethernet transceiver chip. It is an Atheros, uh, it's a gigabit. Uh, here, let me see if I can zoom that in. You guys can see it better. That little Atheros chip right there, that is your Ethernet transceiver. It's a gigabit. Okay. <clears throat> so this guy here is your actual Ubiquiti branded custom silicone. This is your... Ubiquiti actually made this, so that's really impressive. It's actually a really badass chip, in my opinion. Um, this is the same chip they use across the entire AC product line. Um, let's see here. It's the... Um, let's see here. U A. ME-G1BR4A, and it actually is a ubiquity chip. Uh, I could not find a spec sheet or a schematic for it, so that's all you get to know, folks. Now, here's all the good stuff. Um, this is all your preamp and everything else up here, okay? So these little guys here, these are your cavity filters. This is one of the things that actually sets this radio aside from, you know, uh, the radios is that this thing actually has quite a bit of intelligence in the preamps and all oh, your multiplexers and all that wonderful good stuff up here in the main the main portion of the radio circuitry okay um, so this here this is where all the prism magic happens all up through here this is your AC chip AC chip prism magic all through here and I believe that there's some more prism black magic crap going on back here and back here uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can actually see these chips and whatnot. Because um, if somebody at Ubiquity would explain to me exactly how this unit works, then uh, I would be able to break it down for you in the fullest extent. Um, okay, so now you guys have had a good little shot and explanation about how this little bad boy works. Uh, I'm going to show you some quick troubleshooting shit here. Um, because you're going to want to know this stuff. Okay, so don't touch that. That's your JTAG stuff. And, your TTL interface for hacking the radio. There's no point because in my personal opinion, these fucking radios are amazing. They are rock solid. Uh, we've already started deploying these all over our network. Not only are they great for last mile point to multipoint, but they are working amazing for a low end point to point link. Or I shouldn't say low end, sorry. Let me let me scratch that from the record. Um, 
low cost point-to-point uh, -point link. These things are kicking ass. Um, that's all I can really say. So <laughs> a few things you need to know. Number one, once again, as I said, this is easy to swap out and scavenge parts from another one. Um, number two, if your Ethernet transceiver blows because of lightning and you can plug this in and it powers up but you got no Ethernet, you can literally order that chip and swap it out. I will be doing a little thing on tools that you should get. This is a WEP 878AD. I paid 140 bucks for it. It's a soldering station with um, hot air rework. It's perfect for taking these little chips off. The chips are usually about 8 bucks if you order them from Mouser. Um, on the back here. You get hit or near hit with lightning in that. Um, these guys are your little diodes here for, you know, basically here. Do, 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 do. So those are your diodes. These little guys here, um, depending on how they get hit, they'll either dead short or they will just open up. But, um, yeah, typically you want to check these guys first if your Ethernet stops working, but the radio seems to be working perfectly. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the, those little guys. Um, this guy right here, this is your, let me just see here, this is your reset button. Now, if you guys have ever had, had a tech uh, say, oh, the I can't reset the radio, it's not working, they probably pushed the bastard too hard and broke it. But don't worry, because once again, this is an extremely common part that is used right across the board with most ubiquity radios. Uh, most flat board radios like these, the rockets, the nano stations, they all use this. That is your little reset button right there, okay? So that is your general breakdown. As you can see, something else that Ubiquiti did, which I love, I just love. Look at the big blobs of solder on the SMA connectors, okay? Just look at that. Oh, they goobered it right on. And these are actually really nice SMA connectors because they are actually designed to pinch the PCB, which many of them do. So as you can see here, let me just get there, there we go. So these guys are actually pinching the PCB. You can see your signal right there, your ground, and an ass load of solder on the back to make sure that they don't come loose. Um, assembly, these things are pretty damn good. They are built very well. You gotta love the isolation cans that they're putting on these guys to keep RF from interfering with different components. Um, yeah, this is a great little radio. That is the Prism. So that's your big breakdown. That is uh, basically it. Um, I'm just gonna put her back together for you guys here. And, um, see. Alright, so right here I just figured I'd pop back over. I'm using Microtech to show you the power consumption here. Uh, on average with a, uh, a pretty decent load, about 50 megabits per second throughput, we're seeing about roughly 8 watts of power consumption. That's uh, um, 330 milliamps, 24 volts. So not much power when this thing's running uh, with a decent load on it, as you can see. Alright, <clears throat> now we come to the software section of this video where we discuss the uh, AeroS 8, which I'm really sorry that this isn't the prism that I'm logged into right now because, uh, stupid me, I packaged it and took it back to the office uh, before I had a chance to do this part of the video. But I did check AeroS 8 out, and for the most part, it's pretty similar uh, in these ones. It's just the only thing it lacks is GPS functionality. No big deal. So let's go into this now. So I'm going to log in. And let's see what we got here. Okay, so... Here is your dashboard. Your dashboard is great. Um, so right over here under remote, uh, normally when you look at the screen in access point mode, you will see um, you know, you'll see a whole bunch of extra stuff. You're not seeing anything right now because it's in client mode. But up here under remote, you will actually see um, your remote clients. You can click a little drop down and see them right here. As you can see, the spectrum is pretty clean because I'm sitting in my flat right now. All right, so I'm going to do a quick run through and just show you the screens, then I'll show you the differences in access point mode. Here we go. <clears throat> so first of all, wireless tab. Yeah, it's got all your standard stuff. It doesn't look that different from your regular stuff. Um, yeah, okay. Network. Here's the network stuff. I've just got it set up generically so I can access it here on my workbench. This is the services tab. There's all sorts of neat things you can do in here, like turn on Telnet, which is a really terrible idea. Oh look, Mac Telnet. Hmm, wonder where they got that idea from. Maybe Microtech, because Microtech does that and it's pretty awesome. Okay, so we don't want those on because that's stupid. Uh, Cisco Discovery Protocol, Ubiquity Discovery Protocol, which is also pickerable by Microtech. Okay, um, UNMS. I love UNMS. I've shown it to you guys. It's kind of cool, but uh, we use our control. All right, system. 
This is where you find the general details about the device, and you can turn on the management uh, radio, which is great if you're using your cell phone and UNMS to program your device on a tower. Uh, or you know you're at a client's house and you're trying to do an install. You can connect with your cell phone and point it to your you know, your tuning and all that stuff. Always set your time zone. You know it's just a good idea to do that. Um, there we go. Okay, so that's the. I've already updated the firmware as you can see to the latest 8.5.8. Again, the only major difference between this particular radio, which is the Nanostation 5AC and the actual Prism, is there's no GPS functionality. So for the most part, the uh, interface in OS is pretty much the same. So let's go over to the most important part here when you're running this thing. And by the way, look at this. These Nanostation ACs will do uh, 80 megahertz. That's sick. Okay. Right now, it's in station point to point. Okay. So this is set up for a point to point link. Um, let's go point to multi point, which is... Where you want to see it? We're just we're gonna call this uh, Happy Turkey. No, no, no. Hold on. What's today's theme? There we go. We'll call it Happy Moths Like Lamps. Okay. Save changes. This thing is now going into point to multi point mode. Okay. So now I can show you all the neat features that the Prism's got. Uh, <clears throat> some of the features uh, present in point to multi point mode are not present in point-to-point -point mode for obvious reasons um, but yeah point-to-point -point mode has got some incredible noise mitigation okay so now we are into point to multi-point mode noticing you only get 40 megahertz in point to multi-point it's typically how a lot of these radios work um, okay so uh, this is up for Canada and stuff let me show you a couple of new features so this guy here the wireless network protection that's a pretty little handy little feature um, it basically, it's one of the things that helps mitigate the deauth attacks, okay, the horrible deauth attacks, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Uh, little hackers get on there with, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, air snort, or is it uh, something NG, I can't remember at this point in time, but you can actually like really hammer somebody's radio and just kick everybody offline. Uh, another neat little feature is, let's see here, we'll go to fixed 5 millisecond, actually a lot of people go 8 milliseconds, so I'll go 8 millisecond timing. Uh, this is your typical uh, on most towers, unless you're actually offering uh, linear packages. Um, there we go. Now, Reese. Check out Reese. Let's see if it'll... Reese. Check this out. Receive signal enhancement. Improves receiver performance for the whole network. We recommend leaving the setting enabled unless you see frequent varying RX signals due to obstructions or alignment issues. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Reese. Um, my recent days of fighting with neighboring carriers uh, over Spectrum, um, I have started using Reese. Uh, I typically go 8 milliseconds, 75, 25. Reese has been a lifesaver. In situations where uh, normally you'll see the channel get used up and then somebody else jumps on your channel space, uh, it doesn't matter if they jump on the same channel as you. Um, before, without Reese, if they did, they could, you know, knock clients off or cause severe slowdowns to the uh, end user. But with the new Reese feature, when you turn that on, your speeds stay up and everything looks great. I mean, even though you see a noise floor of negative 78 appear out of nowhere, uh, Reese usually keeps things running pretty steady to your end user. So um, I've been using it with good uh, with about 80% success. I mean, on some APs I've run it and it's randomly knocked clients offline. But that's the same thing with this wireless network protection. Sometimes if I enable this on uh, equipment, it'll actually knock clients offline. I haven't figured out yet. I'm sure it's something I'm doing wrong. Client isolation. This is something which we all want to run and make sure that the uh, CPEs connected to the AP cannot talk to each other, so it keeps customers isolated from each other. Um, automatic power control. Don't worry about that so much. I, I would more or less use that in point-to-point -point links uh, as opposed to uh, opposed to point to multi point. All right, so now if we go to the dashboard here, let's see here more details. This has got some handy little features in it. Uh, so you've got your interfaces. Oh my goodness, look at the MAC addresses. Isn't that just bizarre? All right, your IPs, amount of uh, throughput on them, ARP table. This is handy. It's handy because you can actually like you know see stuff that's around it. Bridge table. You can see even more stuff that's around it. Yeah. 
All right, routes. Yeah, this shows you your routing table in there. That's the end of the ordinary. Um, if there was a client connected to this thing, there'd be a whole bunch more junk inside of here. Like it would tell you uh, your signals and your chains and everything like that that's inside of it. Um, it's kind of handy. Okay, so now let's go to access point, point to point, and we'll see what disappears. All right, so we're back in the wireless section. In access point, point to point mode, um, now we can go up to 80 megahertz. So that's really handy. I mean, like, uh, these ACs seem to perform fairly well. Um, okay, so now we've got wireless network protection. As you can see, you can't use duration. There's no TDD timing because, well, you don't really want that for point to point. Uh, with point to point, you want this to be as low through or low latency as possible, right? Although it does give you the MAC ACL, which I highly recommend if you're doing point to point links, as it'll stop somebody from hijacking or trying to get onto your link, okay? Wireless uh, network protection is still there to lock the auth attacks, which is kind of handy. Okay, now we'll go back over to dashboard here. As you can see, it's still pretty much the same thing. Really nothing different. All right, so there you go, folks. This has been a breakdown of the Prism, a teardown of the Prism 5 AC Gen 2. And um, yeah, a little bit of a rundown of the software that's in it. Um, so yeah, again, like and subscribe below if you guys like. If you've got any ideas for videos or things that you want to see, by all means, please leave it in the comments so that I know. If there's any flaws, errors, or things I've done wrong, leave that in the comments below too. Anyway, thanks again. And this is Miss Fixit, logging out.